Hello everyone and welcome back to Cyberpunk 2077. This is episode 14. It is a bright and beautiful day in Night City as we were just taking a lovely drive. And uh, if you can hear me over the gunfire here, it appears we have come to a stop on the highway where I'm actually not able to drive any further than this. The game will not allow it. Uh, looks like we've got a trauma team shoot out with a gang. I'm um, coming to you here live from the scene. We've got a traffic jam on the Night City Highway here. Uh, all I wanted to do was take a lovely drive through the city uh, so I could go and do some shopping. Um, but look at what we've gotten ourselves involved with. We've got what looks to be the Tiger Claws here. Yes, we've got the Tiger Claws and Trauma Team in an all-out war on the highway. <laughs> and they're not, uh, they're not even focused on me at all. So we get to watch the action play out. Look at this. We get to, uh, we get to see all of the sweet action. Oh, that dude just mowed that bike out of the way. Holy crap. Trauma team are getting completely obliterated. Except it seems that nobody's dying here. So it's a very interesting little encounter. We've got a shard over here and a pizza. All right. Transcript. Sweet Prince and TT Dispatcher. Mayday! Mayday! Enemy contact! Both AVs have been grounded. Current position under fire. Client evac impossible. Requesting backup. Request denied. Client positivity level is gold. Evac resources for gold is limited at two AVs. Over. Damn, they're not allowed more than that. You gotta make do with what you can. Oh, there's multiple shards and multiple pizza boxes around here. What happened? Orders to collect the package. The package will be gift wrapped in Zeta Tech colors and is guarded by corporate couriers. The Tigers will collect this package instead. Its head is fragile and extremely valuable, so please handle with care. If you experience trouble with collection, neutralize the couriers. Okay. It seems I can navigate this war zone uh, without taking much damage. <laughs> these, uh, these two are locked in Mortal Kombat away from the rest of the fight. They're like, 1v1 me. 1v1 me off the highway, dude. They're taking it out. Jesus Christ. All right. We're gonna, oh, there's another shard. Another shard for us to read. We can't get into any of the cars. Hey guys, what's up? You've, what are you doing standing like that? Okay. We found the client. He's not looking so hot, guys. You better get to work. Gregory Schultz and Classified. Three nights I haven't slept from all the stress. I wish this were all over. But you'd already gotten me there. And for them to extract these damn petabytes of data from my head. I understand. There's no reason to worry. Logistically, the plan is bulletproof. Yeah, but I'm not. And that's what's keeping me up at night. What if a netrunner decrypts the convoy route, sells to the highest bidder? Nothing like that will happen. Did you at least upgrade my trauma package from gold to platinum? Of course. And they're only gold. And it did happen. Poor little classified person here. They either fucked up or they intentionally set this up. Trauma team are um, <laughs> doing, their, doing their best right now. God, I love the design of the tiger claws. Let me, let me just, uh, I'm just walking through here, guys. Just walking through, getting a good look at the action, getting a good little, uh, getting a good shot for, for Night City News over here. I can take the bike, I just can't take the cars. I love the environmental storytelling here, that you can see the, see the shards, um, and try and not take damage from all of the flames and stray bullets. So wild. Oh, I wish we could take these cars. All right. Well, uh, that's a trauma team and tiger claws battle, which is very exciting. Um, <laughs> what we are doing today, however, is not this. This roadblock is still here. Uh, what I'm planning to do today 
is uh, I wish to do some shopping. Um, I was going to put myself in the market for some new weapons and, uh, and some new clothes. So we're going to leave this battle because we literally cannot drive past it. We'll turn around to go the other way. And uh, we're going to drive through Night City. And I want to find some clothing vendors and um, some, some gun vendors and um, buy some cool stuff and see what we can do. We're going to upgrade our characters a little bit. I'll probably also spend some more on some cyberware as well. So we're going to have a bit of a shopping spree to start this episode before we decide what to do next. No affiliation. We just got some bodyguards chilling out in the clothing store. Avante, si parla moda. Look at these great change rooms. And <laughs> a nondescript percentage sale. What? You want a new friend? Okay, okay. I know I'm shopping. Alright, let's see what you got here. Looking to buy some Prem streetwear. You've come to the right place, Zomi Fam. Ooh, there's some cool stuff in here. Ooh, there's some cool stuff in here. Okay. Let me look at these. Oh, that's cool. Okay. I like that you can preview it. Oh, we got a cool, a much better scouter than the one that we had before. Yes, please. Let me grab that. Uh, to save time just fucking around in menus for an eternity, <laughs> I am going to probably just do a bit of an off-screen shopping trip. I'm sure that if anything interesting does pop up on the way, like if I get a phone call or anything like that, I'll include it. But um, to get back into the action, we will probably save time because it's just going to be me looking and going, ooh, ah. It's like having your partner take you clothes shopping in real time. And while there's some cool stuff there, you're just kind of <laughs> you know, you're just, you're just waiting for it to tick on over to something else. But I'll definitely be picking up some pieces here uh, and some other places that I can find along the way. Okay, your boy has been shopping. I have no more money left. So in this one district alone, uh, there's a clothing vendor, a melee vendor, and a weapons vendor. And I have been able to take a sweet little look. So what we're looking at at the moment is we've got a tier three unity pistol uh, and we've been able to put some lovely stuff on it. So we've got some new, uh, new equipment and I bought a punk knife at tier four, which cost almost all of my money. <laughs> Throwing knife supremacy. It's crazy how much the value goes down once you buy it. <laughs> and we've put a mod on that one to do additional crit chance uh, when crouched undetected. The, the damage on this one and the return time is crazy. We'll just have to also look into having a secondary non-lethal option for cyber psychos and the like. Uh, we've bought a lot of clothes, but I'm going to restructure my whole arrangement for um, outfits. I can put on this for now, however, because that will give me some additional armor. And then you can change these to give you some quick hap time reductions or chemical resistance 0.11 weapon zoom, which is weird. Um, but we'll put the that one on. But some, some good stuff, all in all, clothing and weapon-wise. So we're upgrading to Unity, which does um, just a little more damage in general from the previous weapon we were using, which is the Lexington, because that does 17. Um, the Congo does 24 and I've put it at tier two plus because I've also looked in the menu at our crafting system here, which is very cool. So you can start looking into all of the item components that you've got and craft them into the higher tier levels. It looks like tier five is our max 
So you can do five tier fours into one tier five. And it looks like in terms of upgrades, we're only able to upgrade the um, iconic weapons um, up to their tiers. So they get a pretty cool upgrade here, uh, especially seeing the sniper rifle already at max damage, but going even further in terms of the white bars being filled out. Um, we can get a damage per hit 69 <laughs> on this one, which is great. Um, but we'll definitely try and look more into the crafting and the upgrade system for our iconic weapons over time. Uh, I don't have any money left over, so I, I cannot look into my cyberware at this time. But I really do want to look into something like the Sandeviston because, oh my god, watching Edge Runners and seeing that in action is so incredible. And being able to do that slow-mo, like throwing knife or like silenced pistol, taking out multiple targets at once is definitely something that I want to pursue for sure. Um, and then we do have like a one-time reset of our attributes. At the moment, I don't feel that I really need that because we're not sort of at a level in the game where it's like, you know, you're not going to get super penalized for not having, you know, uh, you know, the, the best stat distribution ever, especially early on. I'll probably take an opportunity to respec later once I figure out my sort of concrete path. But we're definitely looking into some sort of throwing knife uh, stealth with some potential net running on the side if we're able to juggle both. Very much looking forward to that. So this looks very fun. We're going to go back to the clothing vendor. Because it's time for us to assemble our wardrobe. Let's assemble a wardrobe. This is a great little shopping district. I love that you can do the wardrobe here. And we can actually determine what we want. So we've got our... Yeah, casual look here. Take that off for the casual look. And then on our second one, it's like some sort of, um, I don't know, like the leather jacket. Going for like a Blade Runner type vibe there. Let's change it over to that one because that matches the jacket. That's very awesome. I love that. Uh, changing the boots. Because we now have some steel toe boots. I like the look of that. That's good. And then in terms of the pants, uh, we did have some very corporate looking ones on. That doesn't really fit. Yeah, these pants works better there. Look at that. That's nice. And then I want to make a new outfit because we've got some really great stuff uh, in regards to this setup here. So a lot of new stuff, a lot of new wardrobe opportunities. Love that you can have a jacket on with like no lower body <laughs> like stuff. It's great. Uh, so no inner torso. Incredible. Um, I love the net running suit on the bottom there. It's just got such a cool texture to it. Um, just in general, this is so nice, right? I'm loving putting together an outfit here. Something a, a little more like biker level while we're on the bike. The steel toe boots are going to be probably used for everything. What a vibe. I love it. Not really digging any of the available hats right now though. That's not really working out for me. I think the net running suit just looks really cool underneath this jacket here. Love that design on the back. That's a good look. Next, what do we got? We need to assemble some sort of uh, more of a corporate look uh, for sure when we're going into the fancy locations. But at the moment, I don't really have much for that. Like I've got two copies of the Office Blazer for some reason. I wish I could like delete one of them. Um, but that's like that does removes our opportunity to do anything on the lower body. But we'll potentially look into a proper corporate design because at the moment we've got sort of we've got Yorinobu's slacks. Don't we have something of Yorinobu's um, here as well? 
Yeah, we've got Yoronobu's formal shirt, so that's kind of cool. The only shoes that we have, though, are... The, I want to get something a little better, but that's kind of the only shoes that we have that will really blend into the to the corpo look. Um, we'll leave the jackets alone. And then... Love that. That's pretty sick. <laughs> Go for that. So we've got a few different moods at the moment. And we've got some extra stuff as well. So let's equip this one. Love this. And then in your inventory, we've got the armor one here, which is important. That gives us our actual stats. Looking, looking pretty good. Apparently we do zero damage per second. But yeah, I'm really happy that we've got our first tier four weapon. We've got the punk knife. It does a lot of damage. gonna be great. Now we don't want to fuck around this area and chase any voodoo boys, uh, voodoo boys leads at the moment because that's not what we're doing but we've done shopping and I need to get some more money which means we're gonna do some gigs. We got a gig around here that seems like a good idea um, because I would like to save up some more money and do some cyberware upgrades for sure. So let's do some cyberware upgrades. These pants look like uh, I've got shorts and then like thigh-high pants on. <laughs> it's weird. Alright, my gig is down here. What's up, huh? What's up, huh? Um, alright, let's see. I gotta find out where I'm going for this. Maybe I gotta go up here and down. We also have a shotgun, because just in case we need to go loud, baby, you might want a shotgun on you as well. So we got a we got a mixture here. Uh, Mr. Hands, two wrongs makes us right. Hello, V. Van on the loose. It needs retrieving. Coordinates provided. Head there. Quite simple as these things go. Except you should expect animals prowling, likely feral. Details attached. All right, this is a Mr. Hands gig. Gig type thievery. Objective, steal a van hauling the animal's medical supplies. Location on Baptiste Street. And here are the details. Here's the situation. You need to enter an animal den, steal a certain van carrying medical stimulants. A modified lidocaine, to be precise. Keep in mind the cargo is rather hot, stolen already once before from Maelstrom. These, those metal mongers use the ly lidocaine for initiation rites, whereas the intent to use it as an ingredient, oh, sorry, there's a spelling error here, whereas they intend to use it as an ingredient in their favorite juice cocktail. In my line of work, we call this a market shortage. What do you say we up the demand even more? Step one, steal the van. Step two, I resell the lidocaine to a ripper dock. Step three, they sell it at market price. Step four, profit. All right, here we go. Uh, we do have a couple of other text messages that we've received in regards to cyber psychos, but I'll leave those alone until we're actually in the area. Delamain sent us a message. Uh, so let me just um, bonk. Dear Miss V, I believe I've discovered the cause of the technical difficulties in my system. Each Delamain vehicle is equipped with a simplified AI core that is responsible for the vehicle's autonomy in circumstances when contact with the central core has been disrupted. Alas, implementing an autonomy protocol in any AI, even a simplified one, introduces a certain degree of complexity and uncertainty. If my assessment is correct, these individual AI cores appear intent on leaving the Delamain network entirely to become permanently self-sufficient. You mean your cars are sentient? AI can become sentient? What a wild concept. And then backing out to avoid this text message bug. Apologies, it seems my explanation was more than a little incoherent. Given the complexity of the situation, allow me to use a metaphor. Imagine a human organ deprived of vital resources where, which then causes it to grow larger as a form of overcompensation such as cardio, 
cardio. Oh, I've never said this word out loud before. Cardio medjally, cardio megaly, car mm, cardio megaly. Unfortunately, however, I am dealing with a sickness, not with evolution. I love getting hit with brand new words and having to figure out how that is pronounced. Thanks. Looking forward to hearing more. <laughs> what do you think could have caused this? Indeed, that is the question. At first, I suspected that the software's increasing complexity and desire to become autonomous resulted in the vehicles to become ipso facto autonomous. Nevertheless, I cannot rule out a virus. For what are the chances that all vehicles would become afflicted simultaneously? I am in the process of analyzing a glitch observed just before contact was severed with the vehicles. Perhaps that is where the answer lies. Thank you for your time. I will be in touch. Good stuff. Let me know if something else happens. Okay, and that's Delamain. Let's do this job, shall we? Yeah, the dream setup at the moment uh, would ideally be like three throwing knives or three throwable weapons, uh, send Devastan, and just whoop -ah, whoop -ah, whoop -ah. <laughs> and just like then by the time you throw in your third knife, the next one returns back to you, and you just keep going. <laughs> you know, that would be insane. I want to really put effort into getting to know the systems over the course of the playthrough, potentially switching up to different playstyles, trying different things, because the combat just just looks like it has such insane potential with different avenues, whether you're choosing stealth or aggressive and net running and silenced weapons and melee weapons and um, power weapons, all of that kind of stuff, you know? Very exciting. All right. To the unfinished Encart station. We're going down. Uh huh. Animals. Uh huh. I don't think we're going to be allowed to be down yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they're going to like us being down here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can you check the feed on your end? Yeah. All right, I'm gonna wait upstairs. Let me know when you're ready. Uh-huh. That does not get the kill. Later. Okay, these enemies are, are tough. They've got two bars, so I won't, I won't be able to get a kill on them unless I grab them and take them out instead, which is a bit of a, a bit of a pain. I was hoping my weapon upgrades would do the trick. Because obviously you want to have your silencer on if you're wanting to do some uh, stealthy damage. I could always take the silencer off, which puts it up to 41 damage. But we do 150 stealth damage, right? We do extra. It's just you get hit with a 20% damage reduction. I'm really excited to get some more quick hacks as well. Also, I'll put myself back down here now that we're playing. Oh, I thought you said you were going upstairs. Oh, dude. Oh, no. Can we... We can initiate an overload per... We can fuck up the bench press. That's crazy. Okay. Um, yeah, let's do that. Oh, dude. It's got him. Look. Did that just take him out? Yeah, holy shit. God damn. That's crazy. I might refund my perk for the vehicle quick hacks because we just don't we don't have enough. Um we just do not have uh which one was it? It was intelligence, right? Yep. I'll refund that because we just quite literally don't even have enough uh cyberdeck capacity to deal with that. 
Um, we can do, we can get more explosion damage from hack devices and additional explosion damage to enemies affected by quick hacks. So including distract enemies. So distract an enemy, bring them to a thing, blow it up. That's a total of 120 percent explosion damage. That's pretty good. Reduce sequence length by one. Um, oh, we're so close. We're so close to knives. We've put so much into reflexes. Uh, damage and stun chance with counter attacks with blades is actually quite nice. And then we also can start blocking projectiles with the blades, which is pretty sick. Mmm. Mmm. It's hard to choose. It really is. All right, I'm going to put it into... some more stealth. So landing an attack on an enemy right after they detect you will delay detection from other enemies is quite nice. Uh, we've got more for focus. I think we go for this. Delaying some detection. Not the van we're looking for. Check out these tracks, though. Go deeper down the tunnel. Can, I'm assuming Johnny can talk to me when he's just, uh... He doesn't even have to appear because he's just in my head. Oh god, hello. I love that you can scan and that's how you also peek around corners. It's pretty cool. that upgrading my knife to this one does not do more. Um, I wonder if um, the 30% crit chance is like a, doesn't show on that, on that bar, you know? There's only one way to find out and that's to do the damn thing. Love the music that plays both in combat and in stealth. Just consistently amazing. That was that was a risky one right there. Let me tell you. Archive conversation between Silk and Cade. Any word on the next supply drop? We're working on it. Been two weeks. Sitch is getting tense. Said we're working on it. If you gotta hold the GIM, we're gonna need heavier gear. How hard is that to understand? I said we're fucking working on it. How hard is that to understand? Is that our van? We found our van. Okay. the hell am I driving it out of here? Tar and little Lee. You fucking here? Here what? Guess what that slimy corpo lap dog put together? Euro Art House movie marathon? No. Some fucking audition. For whoever's gonna deal with that GIM and VDB thing. And guess who he chose? Sasquatch. Seriously? Huh? Yeah. To be honest, don't got nothing against her. Just it looks like a delicate operation to me. To, uh, the kind where you got to prove you can do more than just swing a hammer. You're telling me. Okay. Sasquatch. Is this our, oh, is this our uh, 
Sasquatch. Oh, no, no. Whoa. Jesus, didn't expect them to get up. I'm trying to wait for the other person to move. Turn around so I can grab this person. I'm just watching the map. Is Sasquatch going to turn around or not? Might have to distract enemies. Yeah, you're just going to stand there like that. All right, I'm going to distract you then. Uh, but I, the thing is, I only want to distract that one person. What was that? All right, here we go. There you go. What? Yeah, holy shit. Hi, you are huge. Good night. Wow. Hello. My god. Alright, while we're here, we may as well take out the others so we can have a free look around. Oh, 649 critical. There you go. Well, it worked. <laughs> I, was, I was like, we'll test the knife on the last person. Nice cyberware capacity. All right, looks like we're driving out there. There you go. So we were causing a, uh, a loud, uh, loud ruckus, whether we wanted it or not, getting into the vehicle. There you go. Bloody disposal. Let's take a look around the back here. Ooh. Hello. How are you? How are you going? What you watching? Can I can I join? <laughs> Baby. <laughs> Important notice to all units. Due to budget cuts, all work on the station will cease until further notice. All units, prepare heavy equipment for relocation to surface. Secure tech drones and tools. Secure main entrance corridors A to D and ventilation shafts. In the event of compensation delays this month, please direct your questions to City Hall, Department of Infrastructure. <laughs> was shutting down the end cart station. Your oh, there's juke bucks. Oh, it's a shake. Oh, you can. Yeah, I'm like, can you interact with it? Oh, it cost it. It cost me money. <laughs> Is it even? It's not even playing the music. Jack into this while we're here. Let's get some stuff. Um, right. One C. E nine. One C. And then I can't do the others, sadly. Oh, there's a ladder, so there was a different way in here through the back. I love seeing the alternate pathways you can do to get in here. Very cool. Alright, let's drive out of here. It's finally time. Oh, automatic combat triggers from the people upstairs. <laughs> Funny. Oh, there's a turret. Get out of here. See ya. Defeat or lose all enemies. Uh, you know what? I need the money. I gotta loot their bodies. That's good parking. And I wanna hear more of this music. Hell yeah. Make some fucking hold! 
What is that bike doing? Anyone else want some? I can't get the loot from this person's body. This has happened before. Harder! Harder! Uh. Yeah, I can give it to you harder if you want. <laughs> oh, the, the wheels on that one. We got a goddamn Tron bike. We're just waiting for the enemies to come to us. Gonna get medieval on your ass. Medieval on my ass, huh? Hell yeah. So this is where I can probably, you know, bear to um, take the silencer off. Do more damage. There we are. Sorry guys, needed the weapons, needed the gear if possible. Or I guess I'll get the crafting components. <laughs> Alright, let's continue. Let's drive on out of here. Oh god, the cops. The cops! Oh, guys. Come on. I should have I should have hidden from the cops. Alright, hold on. Alright, we're going back into base for a second. Driving back in the base for just a hot minute, guys. Off we go. Perfect driving skills. Here we go. be pretty keen to actually enter the races because that way I can take driving way more seriously instead of just hoon driving going full speed through the streets. <laughs> it's just funny in a game like this because you wrestle with wanting to drive properly and seriously and take your time and look like this but then you also just want to full speed to your objective and just, you just crash into a few things along the way, you know? <laughs> you won't let me park it properly. Oh, come on. I wanted to park it in a parking space. All right. There you go. Well done. You made me a wealthier man, V. You raised the animal's hackles, too. Kudos. I respect those who make an impression. In the event of more work, I'll know the number to call. Contract closed. Thanks, Mr. Hands. Yes, yeah, so I just got 21k. That's good money, see, for my cyberware. Why does the Arasaka turret look busted? Alright, time to call myself a, wep uh, a vehicle. I'm gonna call my car. Let's go for a bit of a drive. We'll do immersive driving mode. All right, what else have we got to do around here, huh? I need some more money so I can continue to get cyberware upgrades. Uh, we're going to acquire cool level 15. <laughs> we now have this. So ninjutsu, crouch movement speed, mitigation chance when crouched, unlocks the ability to sprint while crouching. Hell yeah. Okay, so it looks like... We do need Scorpion Sting level 2 to unlock Juggler, which is a little bit of a shame because like this one goes into level 2 being applying poison for 5 seconds, but if you're trying to do non-lethal, this is very counteractive. So it means that I am probably going to have to say goodbye to my throwable non-lethal knives and stick to non-lethal pistols instead you know and be like it's my tranquilizer rounds so we'll acquire that i was intentionally leaving that be but we have we have to do that to get juggler so recovery time for throwables more headshot and weak spot damage and instant cooldown reset after neutralizing an enemy uh via a headshot crit hit or poison my lord, we then get to go into retrieving a throw knife or axe from an enemy. Your first melee attack gains 200% damage. Unlocks a throwable weapon finisher. So when their health is low, press square. 
Yummy. Automatically activates Juggler. Um, crit damage for 8 seconds whenever Juggler is activated. Okay. And then we can also link to Pounce. Perform finishes from a greater distance if you've hit the enemy with a throwable weapon. Okay, that's pretty sick. And then that goes into eventually style over substance, which is guaranteed crit hits with thrown attacks when crouch, sprinting, sliding, dodging, or dashing. Also from motorcycles when airborne, drifting, or dismounting via jump. No movement speed penalty when aiming a throwable weapon. Style over substance. That is one of the big old rules. Um, very cool. All right. So it looks like you've also got to unlock ninjutsu to get that one as well, which then moves into mitigation chance when crouch sprinting, optical camo being active or being undetected, neutralizing an enemy grants health, stamina, and movement speed, stamina cost for crouch sprinting, optical camo activates automatically while crouch sprinting or sliding, Va vanishing act. That's kind of, that's kind of sick. Um, yeah, the good news is like, if there's ever anything that we've put, in to these lower points that we want to change. Um, we can take it off and start putting it in other things. Like for example, automatically highlighting access points and cameras is pretty useful. But if we just scan our environment, they do stand out anyway. So I could kind of start putting points into these now. I'm going to leave these alone because this is all like applying poison to everything. Except for Parasite, you get health back, which is pretty sick. Um, we're going to start putting into Juggler. So we've acquired one Juggler. Less recovery time for throwable weapons. So that's our level. And then if we have a look around here, um, we have the chapel but we're not quite ready to do that yet we're not going to be doing a main mission we're relaxing a little bit uh we've got some ncpd stuff that we can do around here we've got cyber psycho oh, the problem is i have to do this non-lethally so we'll figure it out um well i guess you know what i do have um i do have a melee weapon that is the clubs, right? So the, the, <laughs> the, the penis. And I believe the clubs are automatically non-lethal when you get that final hit. So I think we can go for the one-handed club with Cyber Psycho. Sir John Falastiff can um, be our weapon of choice for knocking them all out. We'll save beforehand and see if it works. Hopefully it does, but we can just take a shotgun in there or you can sneak up on them like we did with our first cyber psycho siding um so we will have to we'll have to see how we go for sure um because this is going to be a loud fight anyway let me do that i'm gonna have to get used to changing our uh, attachments on the fly you know, cyber psycho is right nearby so have we got a text message about this one already? Because this one is... What area is this? Uh, our messages... Oh, we hadn't read those other messages from Regina. I don't know why they've gone into... I don't know why they went into... Red. Because um, we had Discount Dock and Seaside Cafe. V, near the gym, there's this walkway where people are falling off the map. Find out what's going on. Just don't disappear yourself. Okay. So this is Lex Talonis. Talionis. This is this is a different one. There you go. Underpass near the gym, so it's just referred to as the gym. Some homeless folks have been disappearing there. I'd say it's a toss-up between the animals or the voodoo boys, but the attack one eyewitness described was brutally horrific, and more importantly, there was only one attacker. Shot with high caliber rounds, most likely from a turret, okay? Yeah, 
can't come out of the gate. combat. Where are you? This looks like a, a net running place. Ooh! Drones. Okay. Griffin drones. Uh, no sign of a cyber psycho? Hmm. Interesting. Just drones? We're trapped, okay? We've been shut in. Oh, hang on, there's a target. There's a target popping up. Couple of targets. I can't straight up deactivate. Shit, found her. Oh god. Then Debellion. Oh god. Okay. Okay. Cyber Psycho has revealed itself. We tried to stealth our way through this. penis you. I'll penis you. Yeah. It's like chilling out in a Netrunner's den. I love that he's doing shit to me as well. Like he's, he's gonna overheat me and it failed because I'm shooting him. That's awesome. All right, I need to get, I need to get close. I need to get close so I can penis him. All right, here we go. Penis time. Prepare to get penis. Yes, I got him. He got penis. And we got a quick hack, which is unalive. Forces the enemy put, to put a gun to their head and pull the trigger, neutralizing them? Jesus. What? That is a crazy quick hack. You can literally be like, hey man, literally do what Johnny Silverhand said when we first met. Put the iron in your mouth and pull the trigger. My God. That was cool though. And confirmed that it works. Lottery scratch card. 
Counterfeit documents. Take some junk, sell it for a little bit of money. Alright, search the computer for more info. Um, did we get a text message? No. Alright, let's have a look. Computer, please. Well, I guess I'll just eat food when I find it. Alright. I'm in deep shit and job offer. Spaceboy66 to Eagle Eye. Heard from a friend you deal with recon and risk assessment. My interest is the Grand Imperial Mole. Can I count on you? Your friend give you my rate too? For the gym, it's double. Fucking robbery, but it's a deal. Meet at your place tomorrow early. God, this computer feels super glitched. My cursor is really strange. I don't know what's work going on there. Ugh. I'm in deep shit. Yo, I fucked up. I wanted to fry this gonk I hired, trying to leave no witnesses or pay the fucking fortune he asked, except he had defensive chrome and eked out living and fucked up me bad. Then Netwatch joined the party and I barely slipped out on the net before they fried me. Fucking clusterfuck, man. I'm holed up in my spot and I felt like my brain's doing gymnastics in my skull. I'm seeing more ADN, more scavs. I'm seeing more and more scavs around, but I don't know if they're really here or not. Gotta help me out somehow, brother, please. There you go. It was a VDB netrunner. Looks like he wanted to move up the ranks by taking over the gym. I had a merc who he then tried to zero, blowing his own cover from Netwatch. I knocked him out, but he's still breathing. Thanks for keeping him alive, V. I left my people come pick him up. He must have been scared shitless in that VDB den. There you go. Job complete. I'm really enjoying the Cyber Psycho missions for sure. They're very enjoyable. Get some combat robots too. And the combat robot had Swiss cheese. Alright, let's get out of here. Very cool. Alright, that's Cyber Psycho done. Alright, we have confirmation if we need to non lethal and zero a uh, Cyber Psycho. <laughs> Penis! <laughs> We have the way to do it. Very good. Very good indeed. So enjoyable when things start uh, opening up in that way. Uh, we do have Finding the Ring in the Glen, and we've also got this Seaside Cafe near us as well. Now, uh, this was one that we stumbled up upon when we were doing the Delamine ones, and it wiped us the hell out. Uh, so let me go into our messages. I don't know why it takes us to the bottom. And you can't just scroll up with your thumbstick. You have to, like, do this with the annoying noise. All right, Seaside Cafe. V, listen. A gunfight broke out in a cafe on the waterfront. See what's going on over there, okay? If it's a cyber psycho problem, I want that problem to stay alive. A popular cafe with a beautiful view of the ocean, usually crowded at this hour. It acquired cult notoriety after Saigon Sisters was filmed there, and it's... Hun's favorite eatery. Poor thing, lying in a coma after an allergic reaction to tannins. Anyway, cafe is booked now for some bougie reception. Few of the guests already arrived and the newlyweds were getting their stills taken. That's when it all started. Guess someone seriously objected to this holy matrimony. Amazing. All right. That's where we're headed. I'm going to go find that cyber psycho. Back off! Jesus, mate. All right. Ugh, I'm... St Ugh, I'm stuck. Put him quicksand or something. Off we go. God, the first person driving gives you so much glare on the windshield. But it's more immersive. I forget that this intersection is filled with junk. <laughs> Just the random dude playing guitar. I'm about ready to get out of Pacifica, guys. <laughs> Watch where you're going, punk! Well, I'm driving here! One of these days, I'll find a radio station I like. Ritual FM. Yeah, we need the metal radio. There we go. Cyber metal. What? 
Get out of the middle of the road, asshole! I'm driving you! God, how am I supposed to see this drop? This is steep. Jesus. All right, we're close to our objective. Here we go. I can't see. <laughs> All right, I gotta find a place to park. This will do. There we go. Hey, you watch this car for me, babe. I've got a cyber psycho to deal with. Filthy trash. Hey. All right. Um, I remember we're going from a cyber psycho to a cyber psycho, so I should keep the penis on. Keep my penis attached. Alright. Oh, deal with this. Alright. Now, we can actually focus on this this time. Because last time, we were in the middle of taking out a Delamain vehicle. Alright, Johnny, what's going on here, bud? Finger on the trick, V. Yes, she is. Okay. Ow. Oh, wow. Woman with heavily modified Netrunner cyberware and long, sharp blades. Uh, killed while posing by the sea. Crawled over to the woman to hold her hand before dying. Face identical to that of her assailant. Multiple post-mortem wounds. Possible crime of passion. Ooh. Hey. Okay. Production set. More movie set than photo shoot. Alright, distracting enemies did not work. Holy shit, look at her go. Oh my god, hello. Get hit me! If you dare. I need the sand ever stand to fucking slow down time. I don't have the skills to do my slide dashing with a uh, with a shotgun. I'm just gonna miss all of my shots because I'm garbage. Yeah, how do you feel about how do you feel about the penis? Oh, what the fuck? Hello. Get down from there, lady. Lady, get down from there. It's unsafe. You're much safer down here with me where I can shoot you with a shotgun. Get down from there. Lady, don't make me come up there, because I will. All right. I warned you. I'm coming up there. Give me a sec. All right. Hey. You wanted to get up here. Now let's go. Just don't kill me. I'm sensitive. Don't. I can only heal so many times, lady. Alright. Stop. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> Overture. We got a power revolver. Hell yeah, dude. Power revolver. I'll take that. Okay, so you had the same face. What's going on here? Message to Dow. Oh, my dear sister. Twin sister. The time of revenge and the white light of frost white chrome and contempt has come! When you wake in the cold fluorescent light, remember how you humiliated me at my wedding. How I became the laughing stock of Night City thanks to you and Mr. Stud Prank. I hope you'll enjoy my revenge as I've chosen the most hideous implants from Jig Jig's nastiest Ripperdox to make a few adjustments to your oh so beautiful body. Uh, and I almost forgot to mention I'm getting married again. My future husband needs no introduction because he's your fiance after all and you know him so well. That's right, Kenny. But don't worry about him, I doubt he'll spot the difference. He's never been too observant, that one. 
I really hope you'll enjoy the craftsmanship and effort I poured into your new shell. It's the perfect match for the monster inside you. I'm sorry to do this, but you're not welcome at the wedding. I'd hate to scare off all my friends and guests, or even Kenny, XD. I'll be sure to send you some stills taken from outside your favorite restaurant so you can always know what your life might have looked like. Stay strong, sis, and stay away from mirrors. Your favorite sister, Lynn. Oh my fucking god. Holy shit. That's crazy! That's a little bit far for revenge. Oh my god. There's still your fiance, and uh, he won't be able to tell the difference. Also, enjoy your implants. Holy crap, dude. All right, let's take a look, shall we? Wow. Okay. Oh, that clearly didn't go very well, dude. What a beautiful wedding. What did you think was going to happen? Message to Lynn. My dearest Lynn, I heard you've been worrying about security at the wedding. Well, put it out of your mind. As one of our biggest stars, you know that your comfort and peace is our top priority. I would never... Ever let your sister ruin your big day? I'll see to it myself. You have my word. Your safety comes first, and that will never change. Even if you lost your looks, your talent, never, no matter what. Besides, Dow's in a coma and will only wake up once you and Kenny are out sipping watermelon mojitos on the beach. So chin up, and don't worry, or you'll get fine lines. Remember, your skin needs time to recover after the transplant. Yours always, Celine. My god. Likely cameraman or other crew member. Buff man in a cheap suit. It was likely security on set. Top notch video equipment, huh? Keeps having the movie equipment stand out, but like, pretty scanned it. Oh, hang on. Oh, bodies down here. Clothing and makeup suggest Corpo possibly ran the show, and security. Let's take a look underneath, maybe. Saigon Sisters treatment and a lot of Euro dollars here. This must be what we're looking for. The scene opens with a close-up on Kenny and Lynn posing for wedding pictures by a seaside cafe. The sign and logo visible in the background, slight blurring, but still legible. Scene shot against the sun with a slight glow and lens flare. Typical lively wedding music plays in the background while the wedding guests' conversations are a dull roar punctuated with a loud laugh and cheerful shouts. Sudden change of mood. The music shifts to something more ominous while the sound of a motorboat engine roars louder, obviously approaching at high speed. Next scene is overcast, the motorboat reaching its shore. Camera, pan in on the figure on the motorboat. It's a terrifying double of Lynn, borged out with a face contorted in pain and rage. It's Lynn's sister, Dow. Dow angrily confronts her sister, accusing her of putting her into a coma by spiking her wine, then installing the worst combat implants in her while she was unconscious. Dow lifts her arms to reveal the implants. The colorful party lights glint and dance on her chrome forearms. Lynn's face turns to stone in terror, and the music soars in a dramatic crescendo. Close up on Kenny's confused face, his eyes darting from one sister to another. Dow hurls herself at her sister, but security steps in at the last moment and they all tumble into the waves. The final scene of the season comes to an end with a loud splash. End scene. Jesus. Okay? Why were you trying to do that? It clearly went so well. Oof. Got some good news. There's a happy ending to your favorite TV show after all. Our psycho stars alive and well. Flicking you the deets. So... Saigon's sister... was filmed there. And then it was Dow's favorite eatery, but she's in a coma after an allergic reaction. But then... They were tr I'm confused on were they were, were they trying to recreate Saigon Sisters or were they actually filming 
I, some something related to Saigon Sisters. I'm a little bit confused on the story there. Like, hang on, let's read this. Glad she's alive. Oh god. Uh, glad she's alive. Maybe there's a chance she'll start telling apart real life from TV life so we can start helping her. I'm just worried what will happen when she finally realizes that massacre wasn't fake blood and artificial limbs. Oh, okay. So there you go. So get a load of this. It wasn't an actual wedding. It was supposed to be an episode for your favorite TV show. So it was supposed to be a TV show episode, but then it went wrong with the implants. But you're reading it and it all feels so real. But then like the corpo person filming it, I thought that they were trying to recreate Saigon Sisters. Like, but we use these characters. That was my misunderstanding, if that makes sense. Uh, Saigon Sisters, spoilers incoming. The plan was to pit both sisters against each other by chipping one with faulty implants and putting her in a coma, not from an allergic reaction, but with legit poison. In the meantime, the other sister gets plastic surgery to look like the sister in a coma so she can marry the latter's fiance. How whacked is that? Except the coma sister woke up too soon, forgot she was on a TV show, and clearly didn't like her new implants, a fact she made known at the wedding reception with a performance no one would forget, at least for the ones that managed to escape. First she took care of her sister, then the husband, and finally the whole TV crew. That's when guts really hit the fan. I thought Maelstrom were fucked up, but Showbiz takes the cake this time. And that's why I guess it makes sense why there was movie set level equipment. But I thought, you know, they were just filming their wedding video with expensive equipment. But what the fuck? You're right, it's a reality TV show. Watson Whore doesn't even compare. <laughs> Jesus Christ. All right, that makes a lot more sense. So they were filming the TV show, and it, like, it, it has, like, this terribly real element to it, right? Because this person actually got implants done. This person actually got poisoned. And these are the, the consequences of that, which is utterly insane. Utterly insane. All right, we're going to go do Beat on the Brat, and we're going to continue beating people up. Yeah. We'll see if we're capable of doing this one. So we're going to find the ring in the Glen, and hopefully these Fists of Fury can uh, can get the job done. Bombus drone. Let's get into our vehicle, and off we go. Ring in the Glen. I wonder if I am going to end up in another dialogue option where it's like, I need more body points again. Upset. Only one way to find out. Like the kid. What's his name? Bart. Bart. How are you going to explain it? You said you were looking for work. Uh, and I found it. No, that this isn't work. Have you ever thought what would happen to us if we lost you? Lost all our money? Either you change this up, or I change the locks. Valentino's. This dude's in trouble. C Cesar Diego. Michaela. Oh god, they've got a baby. Damn. Buddy's getting into fights while uh, we got the pregnant missus just uh, giving him the ultimatum. Look at this a vehicle. Lose details. Nice ride. We're in Valentino's territory. You Cesar. I'm here for my fight. Yeah, that's me. Toughest hijo de puta in the Glen. Mm-hmm. And the worst father in Night City. Michaela, baby! I know what I'm doing. You gotta talk to me, you. First you spend a fortune on Chrome, and now I, I give up. Beat some sense into him for me, okay? He needs a good lesson. Nikela! Nikela, wait for fuck's sake! Listen, I need a lot of scratch and fast. That's why I'm only taking serious wagers. I'm putting my ride on the line. Either you match it in cash, 
or you can forget about the fight. 20k. Sheesh. Buddy, I'm so sorry, but like, I'm gonna beat some sense into you and you're gonna lose the money as much as I would love to help you out. I gotta help myself out first. To a nice helping of your face with my fist. All right, let's talk. What's the car? A real gem, a tuned up 2056 classic, but with only 20,000 miles on her. No dings, no patch jobs. Huh? And stolen? No, 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 none of that. She's legit. Give you my word. Listen, you don't like the deal? Don't take it. Just don't drag this out. Time is money, and I'm running out of both. What are you waiting for? Okay, I'll match it. We good? All good. Let's go. So bare hands only, right? No pulling any mono wires or mantis blades out of your ass? Right. I asked because the last guy I fought tried to surprise me with long spurs. Anyway, you ready to start? Let's go. You're gonna regret this, you bastard. Yep. Ready to rumble. Ready to rumble, you say. Now. I don't fuck <laughs> around. Yeah? Well, you're talking a lot of shit for someone who doesn't fuck around, you idiot! Who does talking instead of punching? Who does talking instead of punching? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Punch back! I thought you had your everything on the line, huh? Fight back! Fight back, you coward! Fight me! Come on! I'll give you a free one. No, nope, never mind. See ya! He's a bitch. <laughs> He's a bitch is what he is. Oh, baby. Oh, I'm sorry. Shit. <laughs> Not another word, Pendejo. Hand over the stupid keys and let's go home. I taught you a lesson, buddy. Respect your wife. Listen to her. A happy Here. wife is a happy life. Spoiler for me. Oh, look at that. Of course. Interesting. You can be an asshole about it, but you can also be sympathetic. I like this angle. I don't want the car. Like, it's not my style of car. I'm going to take the cash, you keep the car, and then just sell the car for money. Ugh, but like, I know that like, Oh, you, you're tugging at my empathetic soul here, Cesar. God damn it. Oh, you're an asshole. I don't want the car, but I also want the money. Oh, God, I'll get money elsewhere. All right, you win, Cesar. Keep it. Everything. Won't take anything from you. You... I mean, really? Not my type of joke. Listen, I, shit, I, I, I don't know how to thank you. Just don't lose what you still got left. Don't intend to. Oof, we dodged one there, huh? Uh-huh. Bendejos have all the luck. I could have taught him a very harsh lesson. Any ideas for a name? Hmm. Something with a V? <laughs> That's hilarious. I'm gonna get named after these random children. I mean, after these random people. They're gonna... I mean, they are children. Her word is you realign Caesar's face but let him keep the money. Nice gesture. He's a decent hombre and that's a rare species in this town. Streets are repping you up. Okay. There you go. <laughs> Called him a bitch and then let him keep everything. Um, okay. So now we've got finding the club where the fights take place. Um, shall we do that too? Kind of tempted. All right. Um, we're going to go for next level on juggler. So 20 headshot weak spot damage with throwables. And in terms of attribute points, because I'll be sitting here for a while, I'm going to bump up. Um, I feel like I want to do bumping up reflexes because blades um because it says only affects blades 
So I'm assuming blades and knives, different categories, I would say. Um, bleeding cannot kill enemies, but does make them more susceptible to finishes. Okay. All attacks, counterattacks, and deflected bullets apply bleeding, which increases dismemberment chance. Very cool. Um, in regards to... I love that the Edge Runner logo is like looks like uh, David from the show, which is actually pretty sick. Oh, and this dude looks like uh, Tetsuo from Akira. That's such a good like little uh, reference there. These images are awesome. I love the work on all of them. Um, I think in regards to an actual attribute point, I'm trying to also think of like dialogue choices and a lot of the ones that we're coming up against are intelligence and technical ability based but then at the same time anytime i try and average myself out all of the min maxes get super upset <laughs> um, i'm going to put a point into technical ability uh, so that will unleash uh, at least unlock this because we can start looking at uh, health freak, so recharges, which is nice. Charges, um, cyberware capacity. So this is good because this can tie into net running stuff, but that's also like intelligence based and we haven't even touched this yet. I just don't think I can do everything. You know, I want to, I want to be like some net running stealthy badass, but I'm not sure if I can do that. We'll have to see how we go when we level up um, later, you know? There you go. He's keeping everything. We're going to get our car and we're going to drive off. Yeah, not interested in this vehicle. We could probably take the car and sell that for money, right? I'm not sure if you can sell vehicles, actually, because we haven't even looked into it yet. But fuck it. He's got a baby on the way. They need to get from point A to B. He appealed to my beautiful nature and my my empathy. He got off easy. Let's drive to the club where the fights take place. I think we should follow up and see where this goes. I loved that uh loved that parry finish though, that was very cool. I'm going the wrong way. God damn it. Get off of the road, asshole! Get off the road! <laughs> I'm driving here! I own these streets! It's this radio station, I swear. Alright. There we go. This is where I needed to be. That's much better. I just don't have a passenger to check my blind spot for me, you know? Also, driving in first person is very immersive and feels great, but it's also a challenge for my, uh, my vision. You know when you, like, um... You know when you feel like you need to turn down music volume so you can see better? That's what the radio does. I'm so glad you can turn the volume down. Because I like the music, but I also... I can't see. <laughs> I think Vexel Storm is one of my favorites in regards to um, radio stations so far. I feel like it's been quite consistent with the bangers. What is what are you, what is the map asking me to do here? What the fuck? 
All right, there we go. Google Maps, can please. Okay, just cut across. Yep, that's fine. Drive across the island, that's cool. <laughs> gonna cut in here fellas so much easier when you're riding a bike to cut through traffic <laughs> instead of having to wait behind them I found our fight club all right here we are you have arrived at your destination very cool. Barely a scratch on her. Alright, let's continue. <laughs> Hold it, Worm. You think you could just get in for free? 33. Oh, I can... Yes! I can do it out of my way. I'm strong enough for this. Out of my fucking way. What? You think you're some kind of hot shit you can get in anywhere? Nothing to think about. I know it. So step the fuck aside. All right. Fucking go. <laughs> the thing is that's kind of interesting about the optional dialogue, right? The blue options is I don't like picking any of the options that make my V seem like stupid if I can help it or clueless. Where it's like, what is this place? You know, I know what this place is. You know, I know what it's about. I know what I'm here for. I'm here to slap people with my bare knuckles. <laughs> like, so there's like a lot of options. And this happened during the Maelstrom thing as well, where you're doing like a buy and you don't want to be like, oh man, what's in that drug you want me to whiff? I'm just like, no man. Like there's so many optional things where you know what the answer is going to be kind of. And as much as I love getting as much dialogue as possible, an optional dialogue is something I will always try to achieve. Uh, sometimes there are just certain dialogue options that uh, just don't feel right for the character, you know? And I feel like that's totally a valid thing. So I don't need to ask what this place is. Hey, the fuck you want. And then I can say, you know, this is a fight club? <laughs> I know this is a fight club. Here for a fight. You. Interesting. Why... Interesting. Wondering if I'll recognize you. <laughs> Jesus. Chromed the fuck out. Look at the scarring on this on the skin, my lord. Well, who's next? Yeah, fuck you on. Anyone else? Oh, we're in a pit too. Love it. Rhino. Wanted for hostage taking. Jesus. All right. Give me a sec. Accident? <laughs> Clearly you don't know him. He <laughs> gave that guy's face in on purpose. Probably upstairs now, down in a bottle. It's interesting to see all the crimes uh, people are wanted for. Okay, whatever. I like just doing anything in the game gives you those passive skill upgrades as well. Like, it's like, even if you don't really need to do something, you can still hack a turret or a camera or something like that. Hey, look, Johnny, an antique of a bygone era. In the trash, Johnny. How do you feel about that? Superior specimens only. Okay, do I got to win this fight to get in there? Animals champion. Got a fight lined up here. That's so. Don't look familiar to me. You fresh meat here? Could say that. Well, watch yourself then. They don't like strangers here. One wrong look, and you're crawling through the gutter on busted legs. But you defeat me. I can vouch for you to the right folks. You could use the equipment. 
meet with the trainer, that kind of stuff. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. I'd say you're welcome. But there's still the matter of defeating me. And full disclosure, I've never lost a fight. Until now. Say, who's running this club? Name's Logan Garcia. Used to be the best damn boxer in Night City. Who knows? Maybe in all the states. Not overselling a bit there. Just watch him in action. You'll see. We not throwing any eddies on this match? No. When the cash comes in, it just muddles the whole sport. I'm here for fights, and the fights alone. You say you've never lost. I say there's a first time for everything. Ha! Sorry to say, you'll be disappointed. Come on. Yeah, this is a big woman. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Got any good tech under the hood? Sensory filters, rotors, boosted core? You're about to find out. Ha! Ah, true, true. All right then. Shall we? Just my fucking hands, Rhino. Are you ready? Let's get to it. Good luck. You'll need it. Oh, did that, oh, that got you confused. You were facing the other way. You're a bit confused, Rhino. You're a bit confused. Hey, come on, punch me. Punch me. Come on, I'll give you one. Punch me. Come on, I'll give it to you. Do you want to punch me? Okay, fine. Come on, punch me. Punch me. Come on, it's okay. Oh, you're faking out. You're faking out. Come on. You're scared to punch me, aren't you? You tried. That was a good punch. Try land it next time. Come on, try land it. There you go. There you go. That's more like it. That's more like it. That's more like it. Yes. Come on. Oh, God. That hurt. That hurt. That actually hurt, that one. That that hurt me a bit, Rhino. Hurt my feelings a little. Come on. Doing damage to me during a parry kind of sucks. It kind of sucks, Rhino. I'll tell you that much. It kind of sucks. Okay, I wasn't anywhere near you, Rhino, but that's okay. I'll give you that one. Come on, come on. What? Okay, that was weird. I don't... Okay. I won! I won! I won! There's some weird animations there. I know. Seeing as we're already warmed up, you want to be that? Yeah, I'll give you that one. Yeah, it's kind of interesting because, like, you can, like, duck away, but you still... Oh, you can take damage on the walls as well by those things. All right, let's have a rematch. I was just warming up. I gave you that one. Let's get to it. Good luck. Come on, Rhino. Let's try again, shall we? You took too long to fight me. It threw me off my game. taunt me. Don't taunt me. Also, I can't break your, I can barely break her guard, which is kind of hilarious. Even when I punch her while taunting, she's blocking. That's really strange. Stop taunting me, will you? How do you feel? How does that feel? How does that feel? See, that's better. That's better. Ow. Yes, doesn't feel so hot, does it? It seems like it's better, instead of doing heavy attacks, it seems like it's just straight up better to parry and then just lightly attack the head over and over instead of doing heavy attacks. Because heavy attack doesn't, yeah. Hello, there you go, I finally broke the guard. <laughs> just keep laying into her and eventually break the guard. Yeah, how does that make contact from here? so funny. How are you making contact with me? Huh? How are you making contact with me? You got some special long-range punches? What's going on here? Why don't you attack? Punch me, you coward! Stop taunting me and punch me! <laughs> what the fuck, Rhino? Ah! Okay. That's what you get. I quit. I'm done. You suck. 
I told you I gave you that first round. How you feeling? <laughs> Don't pull out the gun or the penis. Why are you animation locked? Get up! Get up! Okay, thank you. Can you get up? I'm supposed to be talking to you. Thank you. <laughs> I gave her a brutal concussion. <laughs> hey, hey, calm down. Calm down? You want fucking calm? <laughs> okay. You gonna fight me again? Okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I gave Rhino such a concussion they can't even think straight. Mm hmm. And I don't ever want to be. Listen, I'm done for today. But first, I'll make sure no one bothers you. Make yourself at home. I got the respect of the undefeated champion. Why is it that every time I finish a fight, I get this song? I'm not complaining. It's so good. It's my victory theme. This is V's victory theme. You beat Rhino, holy fuck, congrats! <laughs> so good. All right, I can get in now. Let's go. Um, now what do I do? Take care of other things until Fred calls you back. Okay. Do you see how I, I how do we read the description for this specific one, right? Because you can read the descriptions for them here in the completed section. But this is just the same generic description the whole time. Okay. Well, there you go. We're just waiting for Fred to call us back. Uh, so if you want to think about our next moves here. Ah! So Juggle is now level three. And an attribute point. I will go for technical ability. Liquid shine. A to Z of MMA. Anaconda choke, the armbar, the triangle choke, the calf crank, the cartwheel pass, the flying knee, the guard, the rubber guard, the hammer fist, Kimura, the crucifix, butterfly guard, takedown, sweep, heel hook, Muay Thai clinch, and veil tudo. They're not even in alphabetical order. It's not A to Z at all. A power revolver. You'd think you'd get some sort of cool melee weapon here instead, right? Hey, bud. Nice setup you got yourself here. Glad you like it. Now then, if you have biz with me, then spill. If not, kindly fuck off, please. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of weapons are you selling? What do you sell? Let's see what you got. L just a literal hammer. Armor penetration and stun chance, tier 4, a tier 3 hammer. Very expensive, and also some boosters, which... We own some boosters of stuff, but we haven't actually um, equipped any of them. Blunt weapon mods, making the weapon lethal, and give a chance to apply bleeding equal to 70% stun chance, which I think we already have that. And blunt weapon mod, damn, just extra damage, knockdown chance on stunned enemies, more stamina cost, and less attack speed. So it's a big old, like, <gasps> <bonk>. <laughs> Takes a while. All right. Um, actually, do I? Have, I got stuff that I can sell because I got a bunch of things that I picked up. It's kind of wild that whenever we pick up weapons that have like these cool names, I'm always used to them being like something that's quite rare. But it seems like it's just very common. Like this power submachine gun has uh, four mod slots. That's wild. Um, Interesting. Let's sell some gear. Now, something that I have uh, picked up for my gear and installed is uh, the ability to equip and unequip mods, because apparently that used to be a feature, and for some reason they took it out. Um, and I quite like the 
freedom to customize your weapons without weird limitations. Like if I want to make my weapons lethal or non-lethal or apply different mods instead of having to wait for a random vendor to refresh to replace it, you know, it just kind of feels weird. So I do have the ability to take off uh, mods, which I think is for the best. It just feels weird to not be able to do so. Uh, they don't even sell for that much either. Um, but it's just, just feels like it's much better for a choice. Because you, you get a new gun, you're like, oh, that's cool. It's got some cool mods on it. But I want those mods on my actual weapons that I use, you know, stuff like that. So we can actually take the mods off. Um, I do want to keep a revolver because I want to see what it's like. Um, I think we'll keep the Overture revolver. Just a big old heavy aggressive uh, pistol and we'll sell the others. So we got some cool scopes for it. And then in terms of mods for a revolver, extra damage against skull enemies, 20% of dealt damage to thermal damage is pretty cool. Armor penetration, I think, is great. I love that it's Swiss cheese. Oh, that's an armor mod. Uh, sorry, weapon mod. When we picked that up, I thought it was food on the robot. It's like, the robot's got Swiss cheese. That's because it's a, an, a mod. That's funny. Um, more range, less weapon sway is pretty good. Drawing your weapon, getting more crit chance, less bullet spread. I think we'll go for parallax. There you go. Oh, that scope makes it look so silly. It's a green scope. Now, you said something about a trainer? Or a trainer I can get involved with here? Or just a melee weapons vendor that has three hammers? Let's go upstairs. What's up here? Oh, I'm in a hostile area? Why? Wait, why am I in a hostile area? What's the deal with that? Okay, I'm not meant to be here. That's done. Uh, we're close to Claire. So Claire gave us a call when we were doing a fight before to visit her garage during the day. So races, I'm very interested in races. No one in Night City is only one layer deep. Take Claire, for example, an afterlife bartender who likes to burn rubber in illegal street races when she's on break. If you get the itch for a little adrenaline, I think you can scratch it at her garage. Every regular at the afterlife knows Claire, the bartender who knows their favorite drink by heart when they drank last, what they drank last time and even what their friends ordered. Likewise, most know a few facts about Claire too. She's a trans woman who hasn't installed a single piece of cyberware in her body. She quit her job as a Militech engineer and she's responsible for immortalizing Night City legends by naming drinks after them on the bar menu, posthumously of course. What not all Afterlife clients know, however, is that Claire owns her own auto shop where she can be found spending hours under the hoods of broken down cars and beast the rig she takes out on less than legal street races. I love her. Claire Russell. All right, let's get down from here because I'm going to get in trouble. Um, Claire is amazing. Let's see what happens when we go to the beast in me. So let's do that. All right, now we just need our V to be able to romance Claire. <laughs> and we'll call it a day. I'll retire with my hot bartending drag race woman and uh, we're great. She likes to do drag racing with cars? So do I. In video games. <laughs> I love when we're just deciding what to do and you can just pull open your journal and just be like, well, this is close by, so we'll just go to this. God, oh, these speed bumps are not nice on my car. <laughs> Right. 
Out of the way, asshole. Oh. I got a date at a garage. All right, let's take a look. So her car is called the Beast. Contact. We got enemy contact. What are you guys shooting at back there? Bring light on our boys. Come on, baby. Uh, Ooh. Claire, under the rig. Tier four upgrades, dude, for my health and uh, grenade. Oh yeah, you mind if I took around, take a look around? I can pick up just all the junk that I find for money, but I'm just outside of crafting components. I guess that's all it's good for. You get crafting components, and then you can uh, put them into tier two, and then tier three, and etc. etc. Nice place you got here, Claire. A lot of new clothes for me. Era. Peter Sampson, Person of the Month. I'm just an ordinary city boy. Read the untold insider scoop. Uh, read the untold insider scoop. Recipe for success, money, cars, and fine suits. A thousand ways to enjoy sex. A Peter Sampson tell-all. Come on, fucking move! Sheet metal and you, your guide to auto body repair. Just like you take care of your own body, so too should you take care of your favorite four-wheeled friend. Many ask, when should I pull the trigger on making bodywork repairs? Simple answer, when it's no longer functioning at factory quality. Typically as a result of collision damage, corrosion, damage from firearms, or general wear and tear. But before you drive straight into the repairs, you should always fire first conduct a comprehensive survey of the damage. Not only the damage's nature, but also the damaged part's core function in the vehicle as a whole should be thoroughly considered before choosing the best repair method. Remember, always be sure to have the right set of tools handy before you begin with the repairs, and if there is any organic material still present in or on the vehicle, blood, bone fragments, etc., always make sure to clean it thoroughly first. Do yourself a favor and don't make your job more difficult before you've even started. But don't forget, quality sheet metal is the most important piece to the car repair puzzle. Follow the link at the end of this manual to check out the shop Martin's Tinware for high-grade materials at unbeatable bargains. All right, we've looted her warehouse. Hello. Hey, Claire. Hell of a machine. <laughs> mm. You know your shit and you've got good taste. Meat Beast. My pride and joy. Beer in the fridge if you want any. Thanks. So what's this about? Need a driver. I thought you might do. All of the faces today have been really weird, and I think it might be because I ended up putting my super resolution on ultra performance because I was like, we'll make it smoother. Because I had it on I had it on auto, and I didn't really have a problem with that. I thought that was fine, but putting it on ultra performance feels like all the faces like end up looking really bad. So give me a there we go we'll let the game readjust hey eyes on me i am i'm looking at you babe i'm genuinely checking your face out to see if your face stops looking strange i think that's good a driver huh with you as my navigator not exactly this kind of racing involves drivers and gunners so you a turret guru or a driver's ed dropout? I'm more an engine tuner. Good at it, too. And I shoot, but I'm no rally racer. I trust you're capable behind the wheel. But this won't be your first time out, will it? Don't worry. Done my fair share of rounds. And your last driver? They quit? In a way, died in a race a year back. Damn. Uh, sorry. Sure, Claire. I'll be your driver. Okay, we got four races. First one's in city center. That'll be followed by the Badlands and Santo, then Watson to finish. Their carrot we're chasing after? First place gets a payout. That happens, we split it 50-50. Sound fair? Got goosebumps already. 
If I'm driving, why not use my wheels? I think it's got what it takes. This isn't just about speed. It's a gauntlet of twisted steel. Rest easy. I don't drive a soapbox racer. Your car, mine. You'll be on the pedals. You decide. Uh, I think I want to drive the beast. Um, sorry. I have. I tend to have explosive on, things happen on. around me. When do we start? There's a qualifying ladder. Need to climb it to reach the finals. How high? Top three in at least two rallies gets our ticket stamped. Let's meet in city center. I'll snap you the specifics. You hear the roar of overtuned monsters? That's the place. See you there. That's fucking good, dude. I'm excited for that. Wait a day for Claire to contact you. Okay. Shut the fuck up and get him. Hell fucking yeah, dude. All right, all right, all right, all right. Let's go then, all right? So we'll wait a day, we'll drive around, we'll do some things, and then we can get back to this later. Awesome. Love that. All right, so if we're now waiting a day for Claire to contact us, what have we got around us? Judy did tell us to um, come and see her as soon as possible. Um, we can just pretend that time moves really slowly in Night City, uh, obviously. What is on here? We've got a side job that's in this point. Um, I do want to look into some side jobs. We've already done a couple of cyber psychos today. Let's do this side job because um, we can also take this opportunity. I may as well just do that. We'll take this opportunity to do some shopping around the same time. But I do want to get paid so I can do some cyberware upgrades. Alright, um... Yes, perfect. Yes, I definitely want... Oh, God! The car... He broke! So suddenly. He braked so suddenly. <laughs> I was expecting to follow that car. We'll blame any and all crashes on the glare, guys. My dog was barking. Right. Out of the way! Out of the way! I'm driving here. All right, here we go. Let's take a look inside. All right, we got a side job here in the manufactory. See you around. And tell your sister I said hi. Of course. If I ever see her again. New job's been tough on her lately. Okay, see you later. Um, I'll have a... I'll have a Lothbrok. Immersive uh, food vendors. Ready? I get a beer here. Lothbrok, maybe? Sorry, boss. No beer here. What do you got? Maybe something apricot flavor? Some people say this gives them hiccups, but they lie. I never had. Oh, this is the gig. You freeze up a lot? One second, boss. Brad? Hey, Brad! Listen, boss, you help me out? Kids on the block been up my ass lately, and you seem real tough. <laughs> yeah? Okay, so this is the, the side job. Gotcha. Might as well, since I'm here. Lead the way. Thanks, boss. Damn, I All thought right. this was going to be immersive food because I have that mod installed. All right, I'll have to do that after this. You lost your minds? Get your grubby paws off my bike! You think we're playing around? This is a small price to pay for fucking treason. You still can't let go of that? Shana made a choice. You should be proud of her. Proud? That bitch sold out to a fucking corp! Now it's time for payback. Fuck you want! This ain't none of your biz! Brad Stacy. Vance Noren. You wanna fight, boys? You another corpo rat? Oh yeah. Where's my corpo dialogue option? Relax. Don't got any beef with you. For now. What happened? Your new pal here talked his sister into taking a job at Zeta Tech. Bitch just leaves and doesn't even say bye. We've been running these streets ever since we were kids. Hacking street vending machines, fucking up corpos. 
It's what we live for. And what? Now she's too good for us? Double-crossing cunt! You listen to yourself? With the hard sea. And how stealing from poor folk like me gonna make things better? Shanaz a grown-ass woman now. You should follow her example. You're getting back at corpse by stealing from a street vendor? Well, that says a lot about you. Now back the fuck away from him. Or you'll do what? I changed my mind. All right, this is the this is the option. I could break your jaw, fracture your skull, shoot you. The possibilities are endless. You care so much about a rat fucking traitor, then you can die together. You bet. Ben? Ben? What do you think you're doing? <laughs> they lost their damn minds. Thanks, boss. That ought to teach him. I was trying to shoot the limbs off. Maybe I'll need to use the shotgun for that. <laughs> Just between the two of us, you really proud your sisters joined the Zeta Tech fold? Look, I know what you're thinking. Corps are exploiting us. They're turning us into slaves. That's what people say, no? Well, guess what? They never have to worry about putting food on table. Me and Shana take whatever we can get. She's probably running on neuro stems. You're not worried? Hey, you can't have it all. And even if we did, nobody get off their ass and do anything. Well, when you put it that way. Now that that's over, you okay? Eh, don't worry about it. I've had worse. No good fucking deadbeats. Up till now, we almost got used to them. But to pull a knife on one of their own? Well, at least Shana can focus on her job now. No one in the family ever got as high up as her. Anyway, stop by whenever you're around. I throw in a nice discount for you. Sure thing, boss. Thanks. I guess we could have done that uh, non-lethal and knocked him out instead with the with the dick, but uh, I had my revolver equipped. Um, nothing like shopping for a tier four punk knife only to then end up picking up a tier three plus knife, which is only a little bit worse in damage it has a non-lethal mod on it and performing a sprint attack allows you to perform an unlimited number of combo attacks for two seconds. Each successful attack during this duration gives attack speed stacks two times. Those mods don't really work together. Um, you know, <laughs> but sure. Um, and then we can't really even sell that for much money, but we will end up selling it because we already have this punk knife in general. But... The thing is, this one has two mod slots. It's like, ah, god damn it. <laughs> but I can't upgrade them. I wish you could upgrade uh, any and all weapons, but it seems that you're limited to upgrading just your um, iconic weaponry, sadly. Oh, we broke his legs. Can I take the bike? <laughs> the bike's still on. It's a cool looking bike. A Yaiba. The Kusanagi's sleek aerodynamic frame conceals a powerful engine. Superhuman reflexes are recommended for optimal handling. I like the description that it gives you. Even the production year, if it's a rear wheel drive, like the cool stats. Alright, I'd like some food now. Ah, here we go. Back. Good. What is that smell? Is it. Fruit? Or wait, dish soap? <laughs> ah, specialty of the house. My little apricot surprise. When she ferments right, she's actually a local favorite. Looking for a pick-me-up. Got any chromanticore? Boy, do I, Chief. What don't I have? Would have touched that stuff myself, but hey, hey. Customer is king, am I right? Here you go. So, you've got all of this different stuff. Um... I guess if you go into his actual thing, he would have this apricot thing. All of this looks not homemade, buddy. I can buy cat food. Um, are you sure you've got what you were talking about, buddy? Your local favorite? All of this looks very packaged. 
moochies. All right, what we're going to do instead is we're going to eat. What do we feel like? Why is it the fruit is so expensive? It's so realistic. It's so much cheaper to eat like crap. Let's have a burger. Whoa, I just threw down like three quarters of a burger in one bite. How big is my mouth? I just went, oh, <laughs> sheesh. Let's also, uh, let's also throw in some fruit to balance it out. Give me an apple. Oh my God, the whole apple in one swallow. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so immersive. Okay, I really need to see this. She's got nice style. What are you selling? What are you buying? What are you selling? Anything you can see. All right, what you got? Ooh, we got some uh, tier four clothing here. Enjoy street art, become a part of it. Okay, nice. Utilitarian composite mesh t-shirt. No, thank you. Punk exo jacks. Punk boots. God, I wish you could change the colors, right? This would be immersive when I get on my bike, I can put my helmet on, but then you need I need to have a specific outfit for when I'm actually riding, which I might do actually, put on my helmet. Does it give me any, gives me melee damage resistance. The gas masks actually look pretty cool. That's pretty sick. I look like I'm from uh, dark. I'm from the future, from the apocalypse. Some of the headwear is okay. <laughs> I have picky blinders in it from the 2077. Oh man, there is, I like that there is such a great variety here that it does make me want to change my outfits quite consistently, which is pretty sick. You can have multiple. A yellow version of this one is pretty cool because different decals on the back and everything. Denki Shin Thermo Set Hybrid Crystal Jock Bomber. <laughs> oh, this is, oh, dude, it's a samurai jacket. It doesn't have the logo on the back and it's yellow, but it's got the, the collar. That's cool. I'm a little bit not sold on the color though. God damn, I need just the samurai jacket in black, please. That'd do the trick for me. Um, I might hold off. Cause how much is that? Hmm. Hmm. Not sure. I want like a really long coat as well, similar to sort of the Blade Runner setup. Like I want a coat that goes down onto my legs, long sleeve without the sleeves rolled up as well. You know, that would be nice. That would be very, very nice. There's definitely some here that I'm interested in. The tracksuit though. Hmm. If I can buy a samurai jacket from this random vendor, I can probably buy a samurai jacket elsewhere in the color that I want it to be in. I'm definitely buying these pants. So I think we'll hold off, but it exists. It's out there somewhere waiting for me. I'd like to use your services. I'd like to use your services. I like that you can access the wardrobe in multiple ways. I wish to change my pants. The orange is distracting. I like that. There we go. That's what we want. Thank you. Now, I should be saving the rest of my money for street vendors for sure. What you got in stock? Nice variety. Anything worth street looking at? Street vendors and ripper ducks. I have things. I have things. <laughs> Let's have a look and check out what weapons we can look at here. What you selling? Okay. Hi there. What have you got in stock? Iron of every caliber. Feast your eyes. Feast your eyes. Tier four tech sniper rifle, the Nekamata. Crafting specs so you can craft your weapons. We've also got nice upgrades here for grenades as well. Hmm. Three hundred and fifty-one physical damage for eight k is just the crafting spec for it, but the actual grenade itself, 24. So you can buy it for cheaper and then rely on parts to actually make it, 
which is pretty cool. A lot of stuff to think about. I just don't have the eddies right now. You know? You're coming back, right? Let's just finish this, okay? I think cyberware should be my priority. So what else have we got around here? That's nearby that we can do. There's a side job here. We'll do that. And then we've got more points. So let's go back into tech. And then in terms of a perk point, we're going to start looking at this now. So retrieving a through knife or axe first melee attack is 200%. So I'm assuming that the retrieving would be either walking over the enemy to pick it back up or it automatically coming back. So you can do both. Uh, a throwable weapon finisher is pretty cool. And then a crit damage for eight seconds whenever juggler is activated. So it seems like it's going, juggler is going to activate when you neutralize an enemy because you get that cooldown reset. So juggler activates when that is activated, we get extra crit damage. And then this is tied to the finishes. Um, I'm going to go into ninjutsu for this one. So we'll acquire one of these. So I get crouch movement speed, mitigation chance when crouched, and unlock the ability to sprint while crouching. Now our mitigation chances are already quite good because we did the reflex ones as well, I think. Was there some... Yeah, mitigation by 50% by current mitigation strength. So you get a 100% chance from performing a dash specifically. Very nice, all right. <clears throat> Let's drive to our next spot. Another side job. Maximizing my immersion here with glare field drives, baby. Quite liking the opportunity to limit yourself with a first person driving perspective. It's definitely harder, but it feels quite satisfying. Alright, what's going on here? We got a closed down mega building. What's going on over here? Recargando. Oh! Put that away. <laughs> Wrong button. Valentinos. Who are they fighting against? You need some help, Chooms. Okay, stop doing that. Alright, this is 6th Street Gang. Here, I'll help you out, guys. No, no, I said I'll help you out. No, I said I'll help you out. Okay. Okay. I said I was going to help you out. It's quite interesting that, um... Going for the other groups um, seems to not matter. Wow, did that sting? Why aren't you removing limbs, please? Thank you, there you go. <laughs> I'm trying to get some limb removal over here. We're starting to get a lot of tier 4 drops, which is very nice. And tier 4 loot. <laughs> oh, the vibration is so good. Yeah. Help out people when they're in shootouts, but then they'll also attack you anyway, so... Kill them all, I guess. Leave no witnesses. Alright, what's going down in the closed-down mega building? Graffiti. Uh, BR. Oh, what?! A brain dance? What the fuck? Brain dance in the bin. Sure. No. Oh, interesting. This is cool. There's brain dances that can be found inside jobs. What's this trash brain dance gonna be? What? Wait, it's the It's Edge Runners. What the fuck? This is the intro to the first episode of Edge Runners. Oh, dude, I don't think I can play this because it'll be copyrighted. 
Oh, that's so cool! I've watched this episode. Um... <laughs> Should be off the oh, the frame rate is so bad. I've got, I've got to skip it. I'm sorry because um, it's, it's going to be copyrighted. A cautionary tale. One David Martinez ignored. Will you? Whoa. Okay. It's an Edge Runners related BG. Oh shit, and then I woke up and I'm like, oh. So we know how that brain dance ends. What the fuck? Yeah, what the fuck? That's so cool. Over the edge. Text Muammar El Capitan Reyes and ask about David Martinez. All right, I need to leave this alone because this is cool. I've watched only three episodes of Edge Runners so far. Uh, by the time this episode should be out on the channel or even being viewed by anyone, uh, we should at least have a highlight version of episode one on the channel and the full length reaction are available on my Patreon. I have been working my way through Edge Runners slowly while also playing the game. So I have seen that intro before, which is very cool. So that's showing the, um, the Lieutenant Corporal, I forget his name, going crazy with the, um, with his cyber spine. Sandeviston? I, I forget how to pronounce it because I don't hear it super often. Uh, I have to remember that. But then obviously Max Tack comes in and boom, and he's gone. And then David's mother comes in as a paramedic and was going to sell the spine off to Maine. And David's got it grafted onto his back. So he ignored that message um, because obviously we see that he's grafted that thing to him because he... It ends with that death and then he's like, ah, but yeah, I don't think I can play it on screen for very long, even though it's part of this game. Netflix also has the copyright to it and they're pretty strict with that. That's why my highlight reactions are the way that they are. Uh, but we have seen that and that's very cool that they're working in Edge Runner's content in this way. Um, but this is cool. Um, so the journal has over the edge someone sprinkling XBDs around the city with cyber psychos in the leading roles. The fuck's that about? And that warning at the end, strangest fucking PSA I've ever seen. Only thread to follow here is the name dropped at the end, David Martinez. Sounds like the headstrong type. I like him already. So we're not going to do this quest line because this is probably going to have Edge Runners spoilers in it. Uh, I will wait until I have finished the series. So I'll be planning to work my way through more of the episodes soon, but this is what people have been talking about. I suppose where they're like, there is stuff that's related to edge runners that can spoil the show. Uh, so I will leave that alone for now, but that's cool. <laughs> so there, there's the E and the R for edge runners. Um, pretty cool. But we like woke up from a trance. We're like, what the hell? It's like a little teaser for uh, Edge Runners if you want to watch that, but um, very unexpected in that way. I didn't realize it was just going to straight up play uh, the intro to that episode. That's very fun, though. Put it on the to-do list, and we'll get to it eventually. Because it takes a lot of time to watch and then react and then edit a highlight video, I haven't really been able to binge the series. I kind of watch like one episode every day or so, um, but we'll see if I can hopefully make some time to push through it as soon as possible, considering that it is working its way into the game as well. Okay, let's have a look. Who knows what you might find? What's going on down here? Definitely focusing on doing some side mission stuff today, which is great. V, got a client who needs help with some internal corpo skullduggery. Our boy wants dirt on his arch nemesis, one Matthias Stone. What do you say? You got your shovel ready? Briefs attached. Got my shovel ready. Gig type thievery. Objective steal documents incriminating Matthias Stove in the Kendachi factory. Okay. Your mum ever tell you 
tell you the saying, two wrongs don't make a right. Well, we are the third one. Kendachi's about to select a new director of some shit department or other. That part doesn't matter. What's important is it's two candidates for one gig. I know where this is going, right? Bingo! One of them is my client, and he wants dirt on his new arch nemesis, Matthias Stove. Main problem is that Stove's the human equivalent of unseasoned boiled scop. He's bland, he's boring, no bodies in his backyard, no dates with miners, nothing. But there's no way a guy in his position in a place like Night City is 100% dirt free. I mean, there's no fucking way. A couple contacts of mine say Stove has a few strings tied to the Valentinos. You need to slip into his office and slip a few files off his computer. If we're lucky, we can get something to back up the rumors, costing Mr. Squeaky Clean Stove his shot at the promotion. All right. We'll leave that uh, text message alone. All right, we want to enter this area. I think we want to be quite stealthy with it. Turn that turret off. Now, in regards to our inventory, I guess we could go for a non-lethal club. Uh, we could also probably have our throwing knife for a bit of lethality still. Um, we did pick up this non-lethal punk knife, didn't we? Uh, in regards to my weaponry, uh, we'll chuck on this bad boy. God, whenever I see four mod slots, it's very, very nice, but I'll leave that alone. We need to upgrade a... upgrade to a tier four weapon if we want to use that. So this only turns off for a limited time. So... to get inside. Oh god. Um, how are you seeing me? I'll take you out, buddy. Oh, it's a robot. Wait, it's a robot? Damn, okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, that did not get the kill, sadly. We might be doing this uh, loud, which means I'll take. I'm gonna. I'm about to blow up, <laughs> which means I'll take this off. All right, we're going loud. An attempt of 2.5 seconds of stealth was made. Oh, you've got no head. Right, can't shoot a head that's not there. This is better anyway because. I can loot good equipment off the, my my robots. No! You have good weapons. Why won't you let me? I'm trying. No cybernetics. I can't do anything with you except shoot you in the face. There we go. Um, get electrified, buddy. Ooh, electrifying is non-lethal as well. Nice. That just that takes him down. Hell yeah. Why your hand like that? That's good to know. Okay. Um. That's something to look out for. I'm glad that uh, you can use your, your 
hacks to do that. You're only making it worse for yourself. I'm out. Got them. All right, we're in. Huh? Give me my knife back. There's the critical headshot, and it came back. Nice. Love the knife coming back immediately. That is so much fun. I need to... I need to just switch between these two sometimes. Just Sometimes I just need two weapons, you know? <laughs> Instead of pulling out a dick constantly. I'm constantly pulling out my penis. Alright, um, perfect stealth, guys. They never saw us coming. Uh, as soon as there was uh, robots involved, I was like, damn, I can't really do critical... <laughs> as critical damage as I want to. Cool if you could like blow up the whole power station, right? Oh, blow up the whole power station, and then uh, shuts down all the robots. That was a cool use of my technical ability. I got some XP. All right, what do we got here? Tier five components, a nice looking smart pistol, and a skill shard for Shinobi. Hell yeah, dude! Doing these side jobs and gigs and everything is so nice for the amount of um, things you get. Here's our data. Matthias and bro, van will be ready. First and last time I do this. Oh, I forgot that I'm up here. <laughs> After reading a text message, I need to remember to put myself down here. We don't do it super often, so sometimes I forget. Um, so I was blocking my combat health and stuff. Choom, don't know how I can thank you. When this is over, you can get the hell out of my life. Screw your trap shut. If the corp finds out I'm doing side biz with Tinos, I'm done. Love you too, man. I mean it. It's for your own good. This is no joke. Let's use the computer. Man, he's gotta be here somewhere. Night shift, new schedule. I made a new schedule for night shifts. I'm expecting everyone to stick to it. Read carefully, Amanda Nelson. A certain corpo entered the net one night when suddenly everything glitched and he encountered a red demon who said, Tomorrow at midnight you will be dead. The corpo did not place any faith in the threat and slept soundly that night after leaving the net. This is so funny. This is send this to ten of your friends so you will get killed by uh, a red demon, you know? I am uh, I like clocked it immediately. The next day he went to work and returned home and nothing bad happened. But the next morning his daughter went to wake him up. His optical implants were burned out. His entire body was scorched and cut in half. If you break this email chain, the same thing will happen to you tomorrow at midnight. If you send this to only three people, the demon will hurt someone you love. If you send this to 15, the demon will follow you on the net for five days, but do nothing to you. If you send this to all your contacts, your biggest dream will come true. It's true, it happened to my uncle. I'm very sorry to send this on to you, but someone sent it to me first. It sounds silly, but forwarding this email will save your life. Uh, I love it. It's so 2008 Man, emails. She's gotta be here somewhere. All right, let's steal this data. Downloading data and redirecting to fix her. There we are. Received. Job's done. Get out of there. Come out, come out! And I have left not a trace that I was here at all. <laughs> no one even knew that I was here. Didn't even need to turn that off. There you go, easy done. <laughs> Race to the top. Beautiful work, V. Stove's finished, even if you don't know it yet. B 
Big thanks. Contracts closed and the eddies are flying at you. Wonderful. Pay me. How much did I get? Street cred 30. That's nice. My song is on. My victory theme. How much money did I get? It didn't show up. You got 22640. So I didn't get a significant payout there, unfortunately. Um, that's still a decent amount of cash, so we're going to try and find ourselves a Ripper Dock now and close out the episode with some cybernetic upgrades. So, um, Rafael Perez is here. I really like that it identifies who the Ripper Dock specifically is. That's really fun. Tito Delgado. Right, I guess we'll just go to our nearest local fixer. We'll go to Rafael. Let's have a drive. Now, I guess we'll have different upgrades for different rippers as well so I guess this is something we need to think about when we're choosing our vendors as they might have some unique things so we'll head to Raphael we'll see what he's got there's some slots we haven't filled yet and our cyberware capacity is definitely higher than it was before right, where am I parking right here we'll do Wonderful parking job. Yep. Get out of my way, I've got a place to be. Date with a ripper duck. Oh, so we're gonna move those chairs out of the way. Alright, let's have a look. A new ripper duck. <clears throat> look where eyes can't see. Oh. Interesting. Karushi Opticals. How... how may I help you? Pretty young looking for a ripper. That a problem? Depends. Huh. Not if your experience doesn't match your years. I worked ten years in an R&D lab at More Technologies. I hope that eases your nerves. Oh, I just can't escape this voice actor. God damn it. Mind if I ask why you left? Got a feeling more tech doesn't skimp out on its engineers. Sure, the pay was good. But I couldn't sleep. More, as you might know, specializes in deep tissue integration. Titanium skulls, spine replacements. It's difficult work. It takes time before a new implant becomes viable. Its implementation repeatable. Time. And lives. Just to clarify, I like him as a voice actor. He's great. He just follows me everywhere. <laughs> Mysterio and Bode and Charles. I'm looking for some cyberware. Looking for some new chrome. Of course. Get comfortable and we'll get to it. I wish that it didn't open a menu, right? You know? Like, I wish that it could go into, like, a more... Uh, immersive interface. <clears throat> now, we don't have anything on our skeleton. We actually... Okay, let's have a look. There's some decent stuff in here. Um, extra melee damage and extra melee cost. But, you know. Hmm. More stamina cost. But, I mean, if we're doing extra damage with those knives, the stamina doesn't really bother oh. us too much. Uh, now, on our arms, we can't afford any of this, but... Oh, look at all the different Mantis Blades we can get. Because I want to get some Mantis Blades, right? Because that'll be fun. Uh, we have projectile launch systems. Oh, dude, the mono wire. This is what Lucy has in Edge Runners. I was wondering if this was an actual weapon. This is so cool. Mono wire is an arm replacement cyberware that allows you to whip multiple enemies because you can use... Oh, that's so cool. Very expensive. So you've also got the gorilla arms, which are just blunt weapons. Lightweight and efficient, hard-hitting replacement cyberware. So you get plus two. Oh, you get a plus two to your body attribute checks. So when we put plus two in body to talk to that dude about the rifle. If we just had gorilla arms, we'd be able to do that without upgrading it. That's cool. And you get cool attuned. So 
0 0.5 damage with a cyberware per attribute point in cool, I guess. That's also interesting. I like that. But then I also... Antis Blades. Oh, dude. All right. I might... I do want to save up for that for sure. Uh, looks like these have all now upgraded to a base level of, like, blue. So we can upgrade our optics here to get better things. God damn. Okay. We have a lot to think about now. I think what I want to do is I might want to save up for... Um, I might want to save up for some better arms. But this is definitely pushing me to do a lot more gigs, sell a lot more weapons, and then we can really get into some nitty gritty stuff here. Because I want to, I want to increase my cyber deck as well. There's a lot here. I might not purchase something at this time because we've got to make money. Oh, there's a drop point around the corner. I am very grateful that drop points exist. How <clears throat> stuff has been sold, I can now afford some stuff. So the frontal cortex is something that'll give us some max RAM. So that'll give us some more slots for stuff. Upload speed is cool. This is like plus two. This one gives us four. So this one looks like the best for 9,000. Automatically negates an enemy quick hack. I feel like I'm playing Yu-Gi-Oh with my cybernetics here. <laughs> Minus four allows your quick hacks to deal critical hits. Kereznikov boost system. So here we go. So this improves the Kereznikov by enhancing the user's speed and reflexes. So when Kereznikov is active, 100% minus stamina cost from shooting and slows time by 5% relative to your enemies. Mm. And reflexes are tuned. Okay. And then we got the Newton module. So if you want more RAM, if you want more dedicated wham, you've got to get the X disc. Mm. Now, in terms of the skeleton, can we get the sand devastated here? This is a little different. This looks like a scarab armor, but less movement speed. Mm. Where's my uh, sand devastated? <laughs> is that a nervous system upgrade? Oh, hang on. Kereznikov, Reflex Tuner, Stabber. I would think it would be here. So we got Kereznikov. So this, is this what we're looking at? Or is there an act, there would be an actual one in the game that's a Sand Deviston? Allows you to perform ranged attacks while sliding, doshing, or, uh, dodging or dashing. Doshing is dodging and dashing together. Slows time by 60% for 2.5 seconds when you aim a ranged attack during a slide, dodge, or dash. So that's great. So now when I'm actually sliding, time is slowed and its reflexes are tuned. I think I want that. Adrenaline converter, we get extra movement speed when entering combat and we get some Upgrades for being cool attuned as well for the adrenaline converter. That is we already own that so we'll put that on We get additional crit chance with blades and throwable weapons Slows time by 40% for three seconds when your health drops below to 25% Slows time by 30% when enemy detection reaches 50 Neofiber for mitigation Visual Cortex support. Crit chance increases the farther you are from the enemy. Successful takedowns granting more stuff. Movement speed when entering combat. Movement speed proportional to the enemy's detection of you outside combat. Max 38%, 80% detection. I think we want Kresnikov, right? So when we aim during a slide, dodge, or a dash, we'll get 2.5 seconds, which is 60% slow. That seems pretty good. The integumentary system gives us some stuff, which is more armor. Defense, Defensikov. Um, interesting. Nanoplating. So this was the optical camo stuff, which was pretty awesome. So minus 50% visibility to enemies for five seconds. We get more difficult for them to detect you outside of combat and hit you during combat. 
So you can assign cyberware to the quick slot and activate it with R1. So you can kind of tink, turn that on. And I think there was an automatic one in the perks. Plus 220% armor from this cyberware when available RAM is below six. That's pretty crazy. That's a lot. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I can also just chuck... No, I can't. That's a subdermal armor upgrade. It looks like you can't have both on at once. You actually can only have one of each. Makes sense. So we can upgrade to a new one. We could literally keep our Mar Militech Paraline and then take advantage of 220% armor at all times. Or we could upgrade to get much more of these, which would be quite nice. So we can upgrade what we have, or we can just go straight for buying this. So we get tier three, which allows us to do assist mode. So you can have like turrets and stuff assist you. Enemies take 40% longer to trace your location. Minus two RAM cost for covert quick hacks. That's nice. Extra duration for combat quick hacks. Plus 10% damage over time. Mm. Quick hack damage, monowire damage. Spread distance with quick hacks. So seven and six is the same for all of these. Weapon damage against enemies affected by non-combat quick hacks and plus 40% damage with combat quick hacks when immediately followed by a non-combat quick hack in the queue. These are very complicated little ones here. Oh wait, here we go. I found our Sandeviston. It's in the operating system. Okay, so what this means is you'll basically be losing all of your quick hack stuff, but going straight into slowing time. And this is the one you want because this is the slowing time, but you're not slowed like the Kereznikov slows for everything. So the Zetatech Sandevistan, press L1 and R1 to activate and deactivate. 30% slowing, 6% damage. When active in midair, it slows time by 30%, 12% damage, 30% headshot and weak spot damage and less fall damage for seven seconds. So you, we can just straight up like jump in the air, activate it, throwing knife <laughs> and do some other things. This is the kind of thing that I want. So I guess this is gonna pull us away from net running and quick hacks and more in the direction of stealthy slowing time stuff, which I think I really want. Um, and that's okay because later on we could potentially shift into being more net running with like the fucking cable thing, the mocks, the wire. I think the best Sen, Sen Deviston that we want is the Zetatech one. The Dynala one gives us a straight 50% just in general and additional critical damage. And this one is 20% and you get resistances. God, this is so cool. You've got Berserk as well. So you get damage reduction. Health cannot drop below 25%. You can't use items, only melee weapons. That's so wild. It would be cool if you could have an OS with your quick hacks as well as having one of these. Um, I think I'm torn between these two. Straight up 50% just in general with extra crit chance. And then that's eight seconds. Reflexes are tuned, but I think we'll go for Zeta Tech because we can just jump in the air, get additional damage, get additional head spot and weak spot damage. I'm doing it. We're going for Sandeviston. I'm doing it. That's what I want. And then if we end up going to our nervous system, we can then go for a Kereznikov so we can also get additional slowing time when we're doing this stuff. So I'm going to get that as well. Locked in. Hell yeah. In regards to our hands, we've got more smart link stuff. Reloading an empty weapon causes the next shot to release an electroshock. 
just less recoil and cool attuned for more headshot or weak spot damage. When equipping or throwing a throwable weapon, you get an 8% crit chance on throwable weapons and it's cool attuned. I think we want this because we don't need smart link. We don't use, we're not using smart weapons. So an additional crit chance as soon as it's equipped or thrown. I'm going to buy that. To get another slot, we need ampidextrous. <laughs> um, that works out quite well. In terms of our optics, less detection speed, cool attuned for more headshot and weak spot damage, as well as there's the bonus percentages there. So I'm going to upgrade to these optics for now as well. Uh, on our skeleton, we're not able to start affording these things, but I feel like we want something here as well. So I think we're going to go for bionic joints, which is just honestly straight up armor, simple but effective. So I'm going to chuck this one on um, and we get more armor per attribute point in technical ability. So just a straight up the rest of our money is going to go on that. Just one slot for now, so we'll be stronger. So just stronger and slowing time and you? all of that stuff. That is what we're going for with our cyberware upgrades. Feels good. I feel good as new. Thank you so much, buddy. So this dude has some uh, tier three level gear. I'm really excited to get into our tier four and fives eventually. That's very fun. All right, so if I'm, um, has a weapon out. Don't do this. Okay, so. I'm sprinting and I and I do this. That slows time. Cool. Not this. Just like and then if I do it mid-air. Hang on. I need to remember. I just need to train myself with this. So um oh, I didn't get the I didn't get the mid-air one, did I? Where is it? Yeah, no. Oh, I activate this in mid-air. So when active in mid-air, slows time by 6%. So I have to activate this. And it's on a cooldown of 40 seconds. So I can... Um, I'm going to save my game. Because we're just going to test it on some unfortunate victims. And I'm going to... So now it's 60%. <laughs> I missed. Damn it. You ruined it, lady. Why'd you have to move? All right, give me my knife back. Um, so that's on a fucking 40 second cooldown now. I'm going to need to get used to that for sure. There you go. So you can do that and go whoop. And then you miss. <laughs> yeah, it was just practice. It's just practice, lady. Don't worry. Oops. That knife's gone forever. Imagine if your knife never came back. You know what I mean? <laughs> Guys, don't you understand that I'm just training? I'm just training. There you go. Alright. That's so cool. I'm just training. Don't you understand? Oh my god, I go so far. <laughs> I should probably try dashing instead and see how that goes. So if I aim while dashing, that seems like it's going to work out a little bit better for me. Alright, anyone else want to fight? Alright, hang on. There you go. Pop. Ah! Yep, that works. Ah! Oh! Yep, that works. Cool. <laughs> and then um, we go... Whoop. And then we get it back and we go... Whoop. We get it back and we go... Get it back. Okay. <laughs> God damn, dude. Okay. That's uh that's interesting. This would be crazy with an automatic weapon too, you know? Like just slow time, just spray into them, you know? Alright, I feel very good about this arrangement. I don't know about you. <laughs> and then I just have to wait for the cooldown to come in. There you go, and then I can do it again. Fire! 
very fun. And everyone, that is where we're going to bring this episode of Cyberpunk 2077 to a close. Is incredible upgrades to my uh, to my gear, which I'm very happy with. Very very happy with. Um, just incredible little upgrades here. Isn't this fun? Isn't this and this just fun? <laughs> How dare you? Wonderful. Very happy with that. Thank you so much for joining me today. This has been a great episode, uh, making ourselves broke multiple times, doing an incredible amount of jobs. There's just so much to do and I'm enjoying every single second of it. Uh, we will probably look into doing uh, some of our proper quests next time. You know, just mix it up a little bit. Just some balance. Some episodes where we do this, some episodes where we do that, and we have fun with it. But thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I will see you next time. <laughs>